Hello everyone and welcome back to another trading recap video. Today is November 4th, a Thursday, and unfortunately I'm slightly red today. And there's really two trades today that could have put me nicely in the green. I'm talking like 10% based on my average position size, but today I was lacking conviction because the market was just so horrible today. It was just so slow. Um, Pre-market was a, a wasteland. And I, I think that kind of messed me up a little bit because usually I like to trade those funds, front sides aggressively and then pretty much walk away. Today, we didn't really have any of that. And I think that was my problem today. Um, so I was trading a little bit of unorthodox stuff. So my conviction levels went down a lot and I wasn't able to hold my trades as long as I should have. So in the today's recap video, I kind of want to make that a focus. So let's go ahead, go to the trading screen and check it out. So here we go. I'm down $38 today and 89 cents. Very, very small red day. It's a total scratch day really is what it is. Um, but I was down like three, four, at one point, I think like 5% based on my average position size. And let's say my average position size is like $10,000. So I was down like almost $500 at one point. Right now, my average position size has gone down significantly because I'm trading smaller size. So in reality, it's probably closer to $5,000. But in most months, it's somewhere between ten dollars and $14,000 my average position size. So yeah, EVAX. This was oh, this this ticker made me so angry today. Uh, let's let's uh, start with it, and then we'll you know, like usual, kind of go through um, all the all the tickers and in, in from least profit to the most profit. So this ticker, um, big 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 green day, um, blue sky setups in terms of on the daily, but on the one minute, I mean, uh, or intraday, this thing's pretty nasty. It had a first of all it had no news. It popped up uh, to fifty dollars and then pulled back seventy two percent to around fifteen dollars, um, and this was like a 700% plus move um, from that lows. I didn't even click on the lows. So uh, now we're getting a bunch of consolidation. I, I'm not a big fan of these kind of setups because they're kind of hard to get any um, good trading out of. You're, you're trading a massive range here. You never know when the range is going to crack. I really like these first time front side setups. So if we, you know, if you or actually, let's say we were you know, we were, this was pre-market right here and we were trading this front side. That's what I like to be trading. At this point, I feel like we're just trading kind of like um, hand-me-downs or something like this. Anyway, with this ticker, and for some reason, my charts are not showing up or my entries are not showing up. Okay, whatever. I just try to get my uh, trades to appear in the chart, but they're just not popping up. I refreshed TOS a few times, show trades here is selected. It's just, it's not showing up. Um, I don't know. It happens from time to time. Anyway, I remember my first trade and if I just go to the monitor tab, which I just did, I, I looked it up again. Um, this was my first trade on the day and uh, you can see how I kind of messed up here on EVAX. First of all, this ticker pops up 58%. This was a quick, quick move off the lows after a really big sell-off and I should have been accumulating this one in this area because it was pretty much the only ticker that was worth looking at and that was up quite a bit on the day and after a big sell-off like that you're, you know you have a high chance of at least a dead cat bounce um, and that's exactly what we got with EVAX so I missed buying into this pullback, which I really, really wish um, I did. Even on the five minute, it wasn't that extended because it was right below VWAP and the nine EMA was coming in really nice. It just would have been a phenomenal entry. Um, I could have even bought into the breakout, but that would have been kind of aggressive on a ranging ticker. Anyway, I traded this pullback here. Um, you can see it here in my uh, monitor tab. And I was getting kind of my fills around the mid 20s. I think in total, I probably had around 20 uh, was my average price. Anyway, it pops up just a little bit and I sold everything. I sold everything for 2020, uh, $20 and 20 cents, made a tiny profit. And then it pops up here a total of 10%. And that was one of my trades today where I'm just like, if I just held a little bit longer, that would have been a really nice win uh, percentage wise. And I would have just needed maybe one more of those at best. And I could have walked away trading today. And I did get another one of those. I'll show you in a second. But again, I took my profits too soon. Um, and that's because I'm trading setups that I, they're not my default setups. They're not my go to bread and butter uh, setups. And I feel like I, in the last recap video and in many other monthly recap videos, I'm like, I want to stop trading backside because net backside trading for me ends red and it's just, and sometimes a little bit uh, green, but 
I'm spending a lot of time and energy trading backside when I should be tr focused on only trading front side. So with that in the back of my mind, I'm like, ah, what am I doing here? Let me just close it out. And that's that's why today was a little bit tough for me. I think I traded a few more little action um, things in, in this area, but it wasn't really worthwhile to talk about. And then eventually this ticker halted down and I bought it my first tiny size. I think it was around $20 right here looking for a continuation. We didn't get that continuation. We halted and we flushed down. Luckily, I had really, really small size and I bought two more lots in this area. And when it popped back to like $16, I sold everything um, for a small loss. And unfortunately, it popped up again, a total of 14% from where I sold. And again, if I just held a little bit longer, that would have been a green trade. But again, I'm trading backside. I'm trading stuff I really don't want to be trading. Unfortunately, there's nothing else going on. So that's why I'm doing it. So EVAX, I somehow, um, I actually end the day red on this one, even though I had some decent trades on it and I was green on this ticker. Um, so that's kind of annoying uh, overall. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I was like, oh, EVAX, like you dirty, dirty bastard. But um, yeah, it is what it is. It's a little bit annoying. Like if it tickers halting, I just have a hard time trading it. And every time I do trade a ticker that's halting, somehow I'm always getting stuck uh, in the in the backside and in the red holds. But yeah, whatever. P E T Z, and that's exactly why I try. I love trading um, pre market so much. That's why pre markets my go to. Um, this ticker also on the daily. I mean. Uh, this, this is rough. A lot of resistance in this area, a lot of probably back holders from this big uh, red candle. You don't want, you want to trade former gappers, but you don't really want to be trading former gappers that are quite recent and probably have a lot of back holders because this ticker pops up and what is everyone doing that was holding this for the last few months? They're trying to take profits or cut their losses or at least sell close to break even or at the best price they've seen in months, right? So that's why um, PETZ had a lot, a lot of resistance. And you can see here, I was trying to trade a few ranging breakouts, um, but none of them worked. I was trying to trade a few pullbacks, but yeah, it was, it was pretty weak. And I don't know, there was a little bit of consolidation here with a pop, 16% pop, but other than that, it was, it was not ideal. So going forward here to DBGI, I did a really quick uh, trade on DBGI. It's almost not even worth um, talking about so this one on the daily equally not that you know pretty price action on the five minute it's a little bit in a range it's stuck below four eight and then you can see it popped over four eight i was trying to maybe trade this pullback here but i didn't do it i did trade the original front side here looking for continuation but um it instantly um, plopped down and I just sold for break even, uh, luckily, because I actually was buying pretty high here. I bought into this breakout here, uh, 2,000 shares, and then it um, was having some difficulty in this area, and I just pretty much closed for break even. So another failed mover there with BD, uh, DBGI. And then we had SMMP that I traded. Man, we just a lot of tickers today. SMMP. You guys know I don't like trading this many tickers. It's, it's usually a bad sign. On the daily, this, this ticker is overall stuck in a range. Not really anything too interesting. Doesn't necessarily have super high relative volume. Um, on the five minute, you can see this one's just kind of selling off ever since that initial pop. And I was trading here on this pullback looking for continuation, but we didn't get anything um, back over 1.4 and it's been selling off the rest of the day. Luckily, I was able to you know, scalp it a little bit and walk away with some profits, but you know, $30, at, it's pretty much a total scratch. It could have easily been $30 right? It would have made zero difference. And then HCDI, the winner today, and this really just happened. So let me just pop this one up. Um, and then I decided to call it for the day, HCDI. Um, this ticker wasn't really on my radar at all. It did have that 30% pop, but it's been selling off ever since. It wasn't until it was back above VWAP where I started looking at it. Um, <clears throat> And then I traded this one pullback link for continuation. We didn't really get it, um, so I closed that one out. And then I was like, mm, somehow it feels like there's a lot of support coming in. And so I was buying this looking for a higher low, which we got. This low here is higher than this low. By a small amount, but just enough to be noticeable and significant. Um, unfortunately, I started getting tunnel vision and I wasn't looking at the bigger picture. The bigger picture on this one, which you could easily see now, is that on the daily chart, we have big resistance at $3 um, with um, a horizontal price action uh, zone right here. So uh, if we go to the daily really quickly, you can see this is a significant zone where we've had many um, support tests and then failed 
um, breakouts, so new resistance. So $3 is a critical zone. And then not to mention, we have the 180 day simple moving average in this area as well. So $3, big time resistance on HCDI. What often happens is when a ticker has high relative volume like that, look at that daily chart, really, really nice. Well, we're gonna have some sort of retest of former resistance. And that's the $3, we had that retest. Now, unfortunately, I get two tunnel visioned and I didn't hold this 20% move from where I entered. And I took profits again, way too soon at 255. Because I'm not really trading a good front side. It's a little bit of a ranging ticker. It's just not my bread and butter. I don't have high conviction and then whack. Um, I just take my small profit and I don't let it run, which is really bad because with every trade, you are, are taking on risk. So if I'm taking profits right away, I'm not letting my good risk reward potential setup play out. And if I never take those bigger gains, those small losses or bigger losses are just gonna eat me alive at one point. So you know, in a way, this was a, a green trade, but I, I'm almost looking at it as a red, tr red trade because I messed up on it so hard and, and it's really not acceptable. I should have let this run for at least the the, an attempt to break here at 267. And at least if I sold there, um, it would have been okay. I could have bought this one minute pullback here on a five minute breakout. That would have been nice too. Walked away with another 9%. I mean, it's, it's totally understandable that I didn't trade any of this. I kind of feel like um, but at least I should have been trying here a little bit longer, letting it ride. Um, and we even had increasing volume. So this was, this was a total fumble and a little bit disappointed with myself how I went about HCDI, but it was just, man, it was tough out there today. It was, it was a wasteland of tickers. Everything was going really slow. So looking back, you know, being down just slightly, it's more or less a scratch day. I, I'm not too upset with myself about that. So I think the takeaway for this uh, recap is if there's nothing really going on, I was up a little bit. I was up like $300 pre-market at one point. I should have just took my profits and walked. I, I, you know, there's, there's no reason for me to stick around today. So just being up a little bit on these kind of so-so days um, is a good time to walk away, take your profits, and just just be happy that you're that you're green. And then two, if you are going to do any sort of trading, at least have a little bit of conviction behind your trading. Unlike what I did today, you know, stop out of your losers. That's totally fine. But if you're in a trade and it's going your right way and it's following your trade thesis, don't just take profits too quickly just because you're like, oh, I'm finally green. Let me take some profits. Give the stock a little bit of time. Let it play out, especially if it's already doing what you want it to be doing and you're not red. Um, there's no reason to be closing like I was today. And you know, just holding a little bit longer today on actually three uh, three plays, two on, two on EVAX and that one on HCDI, I could have easily had a decent green day today. Not really doing much different, but just having a little bit more conviction, being a little bit more relaxed, and not having that tunnel vision. Tunnel vision will kill you as a day trader. You wanna take a little bit of a step back, see what the daily's doing, see what the five minutes doing, and then look for that one minute entry and always just take a deep breath, relax, and just let things play out a little. So I hope this recap video acts as a good reminder for many of you guys, or maybe this is new information for some of you as well. But regardless, staying calm and collected is always a good reminder. Really quickly with my swing trading portfolio, a little update here, we sold root yesterday. I think I even talked about that in the yesterday's recap anyway. I know I talked about where I was going to sell it. So yeah, we cleared out of root. Let me quickly show you guys. Uh, made a nice little profit on that one. Uh, let's see, ROOT, go here to the five minute. You guys can see I entered accumulating here and then I sold uh, this one. A, a nice little 10% bounce. I probably could have uh, closed into this spike, but I was looking for a little bit higher consolidation and then a continuation. Um, otherwise, I didn't really want to stick around on route too much longer. And then XL, this one's doing really, really nice. We got some big size on this one. And again, this, this ticker is down tremendously from its all time highs. It's got a short uh, interest and I'm really, really bullish on seeing a continuation on XL. I think we could see like a 20, 30% uh, percent dead cat bounce. So uh, my swing trade positions are going well and I don't really see myself selling XL today. It is coming to some pretty bigger resistance here in this area. I would like to see that crack, maybe run into six, maybe break six, run to 625. That if, if we don't see a lot of strength in that area, I might sell it all but I really, really would like to see that um, peak near $7 um, for an ideal place to actually close this position. That would be like a 25% profit. So that's what I'm waiting for. With Oatly, I only have that alert that went off, but I might start accumulating here around $12. I do like to see that. The market cap for me on Oatly is still a little bit high though. And then PaySafe, I've just been accumulating this one um, much, much more in this area, looking for that reversal. I would like to take some profits around $10, but, um, that's a little bit of a slow one. And then SBEA, 
I've been accumulating this one a little bit more here in this area. I think we have, I uh, mean, I'm just really excited uh, buying anything below 10.5. I really do think we could see a good pop on SBEA. I don't know if it's gonna be this week. I don't know if it's gonna be next week. It might even dip below $10 a little bit where I would be a little bit skeptical to maybe cut my losses. Um, but ideally I could build a little bit more size on SBEA and I would do that first. And then I would be very patient to hold this one for another um, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50%. Um, Green Day, which I feel like SBEA could easily have, especially as a SPAC taking Black Rifle Coffee public. I mean, this is just a classic ticker that can turn into a meme stock. So, which in a way I hate to say, it's never really been a trading strategy of mine in the past, but I do love accumulating a former runner near big time support, especially when it's a legit company. A lot of these small caps, I'll never do it with, but a mid caps and large caps, I'll do it with all the time. And that's how we made all of our money last month, uh, swing trading. So that was a beautiful thing. And I think SBEA is a great candidate for that. All right, guys, that's all for this recap video. I'll see you then first thing tomorrow morning for the last recap video of the week. And if you want to support the channel, don't forget to drop a like on the way out. Consider subscribing if you're new. We'd love to have you part of the community. And like always, guys, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.